Hello, and welcome to another Pepperdine Tech Help video. In this tutorial, we'll provide basic instructions on using Google Mail. Let's begin by signing into your account. Pepperdine users can access their account by logging into email.pepperdine.edu. Enter your network ID, username, and password. Let's log into Willie T. Wave's email and demonstrate some basics. Willie's Pepperdine email inbox will display with the default view for mail on the left side of the screen. Note the pull-down for selecting contacts or tasks. In this video, though, we will focus on email. One of the first steps in getting started is setting up the email display based on your preferences. As you can see here, the basic view does not provide any preview for our messages. To fix this, we'll select the gear icon to select settings from the menu. The settings categories appear, and on the right we'll select labs. In short, these labs for now are experimental features that in time will become more permanent. To get you going, we will use the Preview Lab. To enable it, click on the link Preview or enter Preview in the search for Lab. Locate the Preview pane and select Enable. Select Save Changes. The Preview pane is now displayed in its default view. So let's get back to the settings menu to see how easy it is to set up our email viewing. At the top is a choice for display density. This allows you to customize your email display density either as comfortable, cozy, or compact. Additionally, just to the left there's now a split view selection as we enabled that feature in the lab settings. We can now define how we view our email list and how the conversation is displayed. Here we'll set up your inbox for a compact display with a vertical view. Another Gmail setting you may wish to incorporate is the Configure Inbox. Here, Google Mail allows you to select how you categorize your incoming emails. Select the checkbox to show one or more of the tabs to enable. By default, only the primary tab is selected, which means all your incoming mail will be directed to this one inbox view. The settings selection provides a myriad of general settings such as the default reply behavior, conversation view on or off, your signature, your vacation responder, and there's even an undo send function along with other important settings related to labels, inbox, accounts, themes, and more. Let's take a look at some of these basic features that you can easily and quickly set up. In the general tab, select your reply behavior, and below that you can select your default text type. In the next section, you can select your conversation or thread view, setting whether your emails of the same topic are grouped together. Scrolling down, you'll find the signature feature, which allows you to choose to use and set up your specific signature that will be added to all your outgoing messages. And near the very bottom of the general feature settings is your vacation responder. By default, it sends an automated reply and choices to respond to only people in your contacts or to people within the Pepperdine network. As mentioned, there are other general features that provide a wide array of customization to suit your needs. Please take a moment to check them out. And take note at the very bottom of the page, click the Save Change button. Back to the inbox. Directly under the Compose button, select your inbox. Notice here, there's a pull down for inbox type. Here, you may wish to try each of the inbox styles to determine which you prefer. Now let's look at the inbox emails. Those that have a white background are considered unread. Left click on an unread email to view the conversation and read the message and reply right away if you can. Click on the unread email to view the conversation. Read and reply as necessary. Click on the left going arrow to quickly reply. Use the pull-down menu to reply all or forward, or you can print, delete, etc. Optionally, you may scroll down to the bottom of the message where you have an input choice to reply, reply all, or forward. Back in the inbox view at the top, there are some quick options for selected email, such as archive, report as spam, and delete. There's also move to and label choices. Optionally, you can right click on the message to archive it, mark it as read, or delete. So now let's say you wish to keep that message. 
you could do nothing and leave it in your inbox. What happens here is that Google Mail has, by default, created a label for the inbox message called Inbox. Basically, if you do nothing to an inbox message, you will begin to store dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of messages labeled as Inbox. In this inbox, we will show you how to organize by keeping zero messages in the inbox. By creating one or more labels, you can organize and categorize emails in a way that allow you to put any message into any number of user-created folders, which are really known as labels here in Google Mail. To do that, select one or more messages you would like to put a label on. Left-click on the Labels icon and select Create New. Create a label name for this message. Letters, numbers, and most special characters are permitted. Finally, click Create. And now you'll see your message with a label and a new label category is created for you to add new messages with this label name. There are more label features, but for now, we'll move on and detail this feature later in another video. Now let's demonstrate how to write or compose an email. Click the Compose button on the left side of your Google Mail page. A new message window will appear. Type your recipient's email into the To field. As you type a recipient's address, Google Mail may suggest addresses from your contacts list using the autocomplete feature. Note that if you hover your mouse over that contact, you will see the details of that individual. Also, you may wish to add others as a copy or a blind copy. Complete your email with a subject line and message. When finished, click the Send button. Your message is now sent, and your sent mail folder now contains a copy of that email. And that's it. For now, this basic tutorial will get you started, and as you continue to use Pepperdine Google Mail, you'll become more confident and be able to take advantage of the many features Google Mail has to offer.